All right, it is time for our 2022 garden year in review. So you're joining me today while I prep the last of the peppers, hopefully for the year. And I smell and make sure all these peppers or figure out if they're hot or sweet peppers. And if I mix it up, we're gonna have an exciting, an exciting uh, dinner meal that day. So I really want to do this year in review, definitely for myself, but also for other gardeners, um, so that I can remember what went well, what I need to do better for next year, um, and stuff like that. So this was the first year that I've had a big garden. I've had a couple like little plants in the past. I've kept some little flowers and stuff on my countertop and they just never did well because it was in an apartment and there was zero light um that was coming through i got like a grow light and they grew but they weren't like fantastic and there were like fruit flies everywhere and i was like okay i'm not i'm not down for this in my kitchen um so this is the first year that i've had a big garden john has had a big garden before in the same exact area and he had it for quite a few years in um in high school he did it as one of his high school projects um, and so he he knows quite a bit that man is very smart and knows a lot of things um, so kind of how we started off this year I, I had mentioned that we were going to do a garden because I've always wanted to have a bigger garden and Kind of have that experience and i was like well if it doesn't go well then i just won't do it the next year but i really enjoyed it and so it's kind of gotten me back into that i want to be a homesteader i want to be a farmer thing like this is this is what i want to do and so i've really taken a deep dive maybe not as deep as it could be but i've really taken a dive into educating myself more about what i would like and uh, kind of following some YouTubers and um, just, le just learning more and kind of listening and see what they do. I follow, oh my goodness, Roots and Refuge. And Jess, in one of her videos, she says, you really need to keep a record and keep track, keep a journal of your garden so you can see and look back the next year um, or future years down the road, what worked, what didn't work, what varieties did well, how the garden went this year at this time so you can see like, oh, maybe the garden's lagging behind or what did I do this different this year that makes the garden lag behind or the garden really liked that I did this. And so I haven't really done that this year because I've been gone and so I am going to go ahead and give myself a video of notes on my garden for this year and things that I'm going to make sure to do next year. Hopefully I won't forget them. Hopefully I remember looking over this video before we start planting and we can get off to a good start next year. So. This year, we took some time getting the automatic water system hooked up, and that was fine. It took us a while to get the automatic part hooked up, and I wish we had done that sooner. I think the tomatoes may have suffered a little bit, um, just kind of looking at reasons for tomato and blossom rot and rot, um, because our, our watering consistency wasn't fantastic. Uh, we did not really put a bunch of calcium in the soil either. So I think it's a two part. I think maybe our inconsistent watering and and um, calcium, or I think calcium is the major player, but I think and the water could have had a, a part in it. Um, so we definitely need to get that hooked up for next year sooner. And now that we already have it hooked up, it'll be like a lot faster process. Although I think I want to redo the piping next year because we didn't do it like perfect. 
it's just a little haphazard. Um, the next kind of thing is that I really want to make sure to trellis and prune my tomatoes. Holy cow, they were bushes, they were ragamuffins, and they just ran wild, crazy tall. I mean, I, a month ago, they were some of them more taller than I was, and now some of them are probably easily could have been 10 feet tall if they hadn't been blown over um, and rained on and had like no support at that point, honestly. The little tomato cages that we had them in weren't enough. It's just not enough for those heavy tomatoes. So I have an idea. I want to do some cattle panels for some arches over for the beans and the peas next year, which we're just gonna expand the garden. Um, and I want to do something along the similar lane lines for the tomatoes next year. I'm, I'm really gonna try and make my tomatoes a little bit prettier, easier, uh, get a lot more airflow because there were definitely some snails in there when we went the other day um, in the, the moisture parts where everything was just bushed on the ground. Um, and of course we lose a lot of tomatoes because we can't see them all. So I, I mean a lot's relative. We, we get a ton of tomatoes but we got, there was quite a few of them that were lost for you know pest damage and just being on the ground and not having great airflow. So that's definitely something I want to do next year. Kind of going back to like the tomatoes and the end blossom rot and like the watering, we just really need to make sure we get a lot of calcium in. Um, we're also, we also need to make sure that we get some good, um, a, a good test soil, test soil, soil test so we can see where we sit in terms of everything then we really need to work on killing the bugs before the bugs kill our plants uh, we did not do a super great job at like keeping on top of the squash bugs particularly in the beginning i was like oh i see a few squash bugs we should do something about them but they're not bad so it's not urgent and then over like the next week they were terrible. I noticed the squash bugs, the next week they were worse. And then I think a couple weeks later, the, the squashes were just, I mean, they were pretty much dead. They were gone and, you know, John was willing to put in the towel and I was like, no, let's just see if we can, you know, kill them and get them back. And we killed them and they, they came back fantastic. I mean, yes, it is a pesticide and we did kill the squash bugs but that's not something I would rather right now work on my gardening skills rather than full on the organic or whatever farming because I just don't have those skills yet. <clears throat> but we definitely need to stay on top of those those buggies. Um, but I mean, this, the squashes came back full force um, until just now. <clears throat> There's a little bit of powdery mildew on, a lot of powdery mildew on the acorn squash and I think the yellow zucchini. Um, but I mean, we're gonna freeze next week, so we're not gonna treat that. There's no reason to treat that right now. Um, which is why I'm gonna go and harvest all the green tomatoes today. But aside from that, um, we also need to keep up with the weeds. Uh, we kind of let them go a little bit. And a lot of that's my fault because I was like, oh, I wanna wait for John um, to be there so we can go and do it together. But I, honestly, I should have just gone and just done <clears throat> some small weeding projects here and there instead of waiting and then having a ton of weeds to cut through. Get into the hot ones. Um, so that's <clears throat> kind of another thing. Um, another note that I have for the garden next year is that I want to put my heavier, more prolific producers up towards the front so they're easier to harvest. I did not super think about that this year. Um, we had thought like, oh, we'll just space them out so they'll you know, be easier to harvest and blah, 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 but that wasn't enough. Uh, we should put like the heavier producers 
in the front so we don't have to climb back behind everything, which I think it, it, it worked out pretty good this year, but I can see how like, if we put a bunch of t potatoes in the front and we're not harvesting those, but they, but they get pretty big, I could see how that would be um, an issue. Um, my next, uh, plant labels. And not only plant labels, but what these, <coughs> whew, I'm starting to feel it. Okay, plant labels. Not just plant labels, but like also what these look like when they're ripe. How many days from plant until they really probably are about to start uh, needing harvest. Just so that I know, because I am such a young gardener in all of this that I just don't know yet. And I, I remember thinking like, man, I wish I knew how many days from harvest it, or from plant it was so that I could know like, is am I supposed to be harvesting now or am I supposed to be harvesting in two weeks? Because some of them look like they could be ripe, but then you pick them like the melons and they're definitely not right. And those are quite a bit more variable, but um, definitely some of the tomatoes uh, would have been nice to be like, oh, when do I, when can we really start picking off of these? Okay. Or basically like just, when are they ripe? Like what are the signs that these are ripe? <clears throat> So plant labels and probably like a little plant binder. I have a binder upstairs that I'm gonna put together. That is gonna be like my plant journal um, through the years, uh, what my garden space looks <clears throat> looked like every year and then hopefully some pictures as well. Woo! This is how much spice can Brooke handle? It's not even spicy, I just, it gets caught in your nose. All right, next, next little thing. Oh, keep a trash can around. We definitely were terrible at that, that when we were planting. We just kind of talked, cause we did all transplant this year. We did not do any seeds. I was not about to like have a failure in the garden. My thing was, was like, I needed to have a very successful garden this first year in order for me to want to keep going. Um, and well, very successful is relative, but I needed to have some success because <clears throat> I didn't want to keep putting effort into things if things never worked out. Um, growing up, we had a couple gar it was hard to have gardens because we moved around a lot, but we had a couple gardens and we grew some tomatoes and though the cherry tomatoes are okay, but the corn did terrible, like we were putting in all this effort and we never really got anything out of it. And so my thing was like, first of all, I think I have a black thumb right now. So I just really want to make sure that I can even grow something. And it really helps when you have a husband who's really good at growing things. Um, but I was like, I just really need to have some success. So whatever it takes to get some success, that's what we're going to do. And I was also I'm traveling down an hour south to work plus and that was just it's just a lot to manage that and stay away from home for a couple days and then come home and you know watch these seedlings that i'm not there you know half a week to be taking care of you know these things so i just needed to have a successful garden and we did so we did those transplants and it was fantastic this is just a teeny little bell pepper so cute they're purple you can't tell, they look black. They're purple, but then when you cook them, the skin turns green again. Anyway, so we did do transplants. And so with all those transplants comes a lot of trash. You have all those plant carrying devices. And I did save them, so I didn't trash them all, but I needed somewhere to put them at the time and like a little trash can would have been nice to have around especially for their little plant labels you know we did put plant labels in the ground but they got messed up so i don't know how that's all gonna work because i need that it's probably just all going to go in the binder but anyway 
trash can. I also would love a little bit of a little shed in the in the garden just to put all the tools because we just keep everything a lot of the stuff that we use a lot in the truck which is great but i am not always in the truck when i come over like my little shears my kitchen shears my kitchen shears my garden shears are in the truck and john's at work So kind of along the same lines as having a shed is keeping the harvest basket and even a little bit of like a harvest apron around. I tied my apron into like a little bucket um, a few weeks ago. I think it was on video actually. And it was fantastic. Um, I need to do that for the garden. The next thing, let's see. Uh, we need to fertilize more than once. We fertilized in the beginning and then we never fertilized again. And I can tell because these little beauties are little beauties and I would like some bigger ones next year. The cherry tomatoes, you know, when I was writing this list last week before I came, they were really slow on kind of coming on. I was like, oh, maybe the cherry tomatoes like need a little bit more help and more tender loving care. I think they're just like a little bit of a later bloomer than the other tomatoes were. Um, that or like my, my assumptions for harvest time are completely different than what they actually are because there were a ton the other day when we went to harvest, but early in the season there weren't too many. When the, when the San Marzanos and the Romas were coming on nice, the cherry tomatoes were still very slow. Um, and those big beef sticky tomatoes, those big beef sticky tomatoes, there's a lot of them now but they're all still green i don't i think we got a couple ripe ones of those and even then we could we didn't know that was another thing is like we didn't know when to harvest them because they didn't really turn red so it was like when when at what point do we harvest them so we need like a little bit of a harvest guide is what we need the next thing i really wanted is i want to attract more pollinators next year and along with that, I want to make the garden more beautiful, meaning I want to add some flowers. It's not just for food. It is for enjoyment. Like, and gardens really enjoy being appreciated just like everyone else does. So I'm just going to, I need to spend more time. I want to put more tender, loving care in it this next year because um, I really do enjoy being out in the garden. Uh, I mean, it's like 100 degrees out most of the time, but that aside, <laughs> I do really enjoy being out in the garden. And so I would like to uh, beautify it a little bit. I have some plans for that. I have some rough sketches of what I would like to do for next year. So I'm really excited um, for all of that next year. I also want to, in terms of like going back to, this is really all not organized, can you tell? In going back to keeping a garden journal, I want to keep track of how many pounds of food I produce and how far that goes. Like, does it, what purse, how many pounds got frozen? Um, how many pounds got canned? What did they get canned into? what got dehydrated, <clears throat> um, that kind of stuff. So I can really actually see like, yes, this is <clears throat> actually ben benefiting us and we're actually getting food that we're eating out of our garden. Cause that's, that's kind of like a big, not issue, but a big thing I've been thinking about cause I can grow things all the live long day long, it's fine. But when it comes home and you're making dinner, well, what do you do with it? You can't just make fajitas all the time for your bell peppers and your, um, you know, and so it's just like, what are some recipes? And so that's the other thing um, I'm working on at home. I, or at home, this is home. In Oregon, where I'm working right now, um, I have a recipe binder that I'm working on and I really want to put, I have my, labels such as like bread and sourdough and desserts and main dishes soups uh, stuff like that but i really want 
here's what you can do with all these extra pepper. I want a pepper section. I want a tomato section. I want a bean section. And I, and I want foods that we really like so that we make them. That's the other thing is like, I am not a seasonal cooker at all. And I need to be way better at that, just period. And so that's something that I really want to work on. Um, and then like, what do I do with all these cans of tomato sauce and tomato, crushed tomatoes? Like, what do you do with them, you know? And, and so making sure that like, I'm really using what we produced. And then also I kind of would like to, with all of those pounds of food produced and everything, you know, like, how much money am I saving by eating this? Like, how much would I have spent on all of this food? And then how much should we actually spend on all of this garden, you know? And so I would really like to kind of look at that and be like, wow, like we really did, we really did something this year, you know? I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, we really did something this year in a lot of ways, but I would like to see it like in a number of things. Like just, just a good validation is what I really need. Um, next thing, vertical space. We kind of already talked about that. I definitely want to go vertical next year. And then going back to the beauty, I really want to spend time and just love my garden. That's what I want to do. I just want to spend time in my garden, in my kitchen, and do some things and cook some good food for my hubby. Um, big note here, wear gloves when working with the squashes. And then be aware of the tomato tar. Just make sure you wash it off. Expect to get dirty. Um, note to self, we don't really grow eat acorn squash, so we don't need to grow it. Nor do we eat the spaghetti squash, because I haven't cracked into those yet. So we don't need to grow that again next year. Uh, the melons, we have mutually decided that next year we're not going to do melons because like one or two of them turned out this year and one of them kind of turned out this year. The rest of them are just kind of a bust. So like I'm not going to waste any garden space with that. I, and we don't eat enough melons to like grow them really. I'd rather just go to the local farmer's market, the local fruit stand and just support our local farmers and do it that way because then we can make sure we're getting a really good product and in amounts that we can eat because we just don't eat all that much. There's just two of us right now. Uh, let's see, what else? Bell peppers get sunburned. I don't know if y'all knew this, but I didn't know this. I was like, oh my gosh, what are we doing wrong? Because it was coming on. We were seeing, seeing these sunburn spots the same time that the blossom end rot was happening. And I was like, surely it's the same issue. And we kind of still had those sunburning spots. It's less now because the, the plants are bigger and able to shade the peppers a little bit more, but peppers get sunburnt, so make sure that you um, shade them a little bit or just are aware of that. Um, don't plant Italian grilling peppers because we don't really eat them. We like the spicy peppers more. So next year, I'm going, well, we'll talk about next year later. Um, yeah, and I kind of already mentioned this. is like, make sure to have, like, recipes beforehand um, all set out, ready for you to eat, that you're, like, excited about, too, so that you know what to do with these foods that come in that you have grown and you have pounds and pounds and pounds of all of these things make sure you have recipes or ideas like how many crushed tomatoes are you going to do you know do a guesstimate because um, i would really yeah i really want to know how much comes in how much we're eating going back to that whole journaling thing so, so that is our 2022 year in review and I'm going to stop this recording, start another recording, and we're going to talk about my plans for 2023.